Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will cover the module Introduction to Big Data Techniques for CFA Level 1 2025. If you find this video useful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any update. Also in the description box, you can find the link to download this presentation and the link to join my telegram group. Now let's get started. So there are three learning outcome statements in this module. We'll go through them one by one. Describe aspects of fintech that are directly relevant for the gathering and analyzing of financial data. So first of all, let's see what is fintech. Fintech refers to technology driven innovation that is occurring in the financial services industry. That is, you are combining technology with finance. Fintech has advanced into decision making applications based on complex machine learning logic in which computer programs are able to learn how to complete tasks over time. That means instead of relying on the human knowledge, you are relying on computer programs to make decisions. So let's see the applications of fintech. First of all, the analysis of large data sets. With time, the amount of traditional data that is the security prices, the corporate financial statements is increasing day by day. And there's also a massive amount of alternative data being generated from non traditional data sources such as social media and sensor networks. It can also be now through the help of fintech, it is possible to integrate this alternative data into portfolio managers investment decision making process and it is used to help generate alpha. The analytical tools for extremely large data sets, techniques involving AI might be better suited to identify complex non-linear relationships because the traditional quantitative methods and stat analysis is not able to identify complex non-linear relationships in the data. So these advances in AI based techniques are enabling different data analysis approaches. Let's see what is big data. Big data as its name implies, it's the data that is in a huge volume we can say. So it is B, it is the data generated from traditional sources such as stock exchanges, companies and governments as well as non traditional data types such as from arising, the data arising from the use of electronic devices, the social media and the sensor networks. There are four characteristics of big data. We call them collectively as V4. First of all, volume. Volume refers to that the amount of data collected in files, records and tables is very large. It represents millions and trillions of data points. Velocity. The speed and the frequency with which the data is recorded and transmitted has accelerated in the recent past. The real time and non near real time data is becoming the norm in many areas as in stock exchanges the real time data is much appreciated than using a past data. Variety. The data is collected from many different sources and in a variety of formats including structured data and some semi structured data and unstructured data. Veracity. Veracity refers to the credibility and reliability of different data sources. Since big data is collected from many different sources, so we have to make sure that the data collected is reliable. Big data can be structured, semi structured and unstructured. Structured data items are such that can be organized in tables and are commonly stored in databases where each field represents the same type of information. Unstructured data, it is like the unorganized data that cannot be represented in tabular form such as the texts, videos, uh, tweets and all that. Semi-structured data ha can have attributes of both the structured data and the unstructured data. Now let's see the sources of big data. The sources of big data, the data can be generated by the financial markets. The businesses such as corporate financial statements, uh, commentaries, management commentaries and all that. Governments like the trade, economic, employment and payroll data generated by the government sources. Individuals by uh, 
the product reviews, the internet search logs, social media posts, sensors. The sensors can provide data such as satellite imagery, the traffic patterns, and IoT. IoT refers to the devices which have internet enabled in them. They have different type of sensors and they generate a variety of data. In gathering business intelligence, analysts in the past have only depended upon the traditional data sources using statical methods to measure performance and predict, predict future growth, etc. But in contrast, the analysis of big data incorporates the use of alternative data sources. Now, there are three main sources of alternative data. First is the data generated by individuals, that is the text, videos, audio, or website clicks. This is an unstructured data. The data generated by business processes such as supply chain information, banking records, point of sale scanner data, these are structured data. Then data generated by sensors such as smartphones, cameras, RFID chips and satellites. It can be unstructured and the volume of data is much greater than the business or the individuals. Describe big data, artificial intelligence and machine learning. We have already covered the big data. So let's focus on artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence refers to the computer systems that are capable of performing tasks that traditionally required the human intelligence. The early example of artificial intelligence was the expert system, a type of computer program that attempted to simulate the knowledge base and analytical abilities of human experts in a specific problem solving context. It was accomplished through the use of if then rules, but that was the earlier use of artificial intelligence. But nowadays, the computer programs are able to uh, mimic the human brain also. So that is done through neural networks. Neural networks refer it. Neural networks work similar to how our brain learns and processes information. They have neural nodes just as our brain has. Neural networks also have neural nodes. Now let's see machine learning. Machine learning involves the computer based techniques that seek to extract knowledge from large amounts of data without making any assumptions on the data's underlying probability distribution. That is, you do not know anything about the underlying data, but still you are able to extract knowledge from that data that is done through machine learning. The emphasis is on the ability of the algorithm to generate structure or predictions without any help from a human. The aim is to find the pattern and apply the pattern. So let's see how a machine learning algorithm works. First of all, the algorithm is given inputs and it also be, could be given the outputs that is the target data. The algorithm learns from the data provided how best to model the inputs to outputs that is it tries to find the relation between the inputs and the outputs and then it uses that relation to predict the future values. Machine learning involves splitting the data set into three distinct subsets. First of all, a training data set, a validation data set and a test data set. The training data set is used to the training data set is used to identify the relationships between the inputs and outputs based on the historical patterns of the data. Then these relationships are validated using a validation data set and the model is tuned. Then the test data set is used to test the model's ability to predict. Once an algorithm has been trained, validated and tested, the model can be used to predict outcomes based on other data sets. Let's discuss the fit of the algorithm. There are two cases, overfitting and underfitting. The overfitting occurs when the machine learning model learns the input and target data set too precisely. That means it depends upon the, uh, it depends upon the training data set so much that it has a high accuracy in the training data set, but as we put it into the testing phase, its accuracy lowers. 
In such cases, the model has been overtrained on the data and treats noise in the data as true parameters. It is not able to accurately predict outcomes using a different data set and it could be too complex. And when a model has been underfitted, the machine learning model treats true parameters as if they are noise and is not able to recognize the relationships appropriately. In such cases, the model could be too simplistic. Underfitted models typically will fail to fully discover the patterns that underlie the data. Types of machine learning algorithms. There are three types of machine learning algorithms. Supervised learning. In supervised learning, we have a labeled training data. So, the computer program learns to model relationships based on this labeled data. In unsupervised learning, we are not given a labeled data, but instead we are only given data from which the algorithm seeks to describe the data and their structure. Third one is deep learning. In deep learning, the computers use neural networks with many hidden layers to perform multi-stage non-linear data processing to identify the patterns. Now, what are the applications of machine learning in finance? Machine learning techniques are used for big data analysis to help predict trends or market events such as the likelihood of a successful merger or an outcome of a political election. The image recognition algorithms can also analyze data from satellite imaging systems to provide intelligence on the number of consumers in retail store parking lots, the uh, agricultural activity, activity going on. And these are just a few examples. There are a lot more applications of machine learning. This information could provide insight into individual firms are at a national or global levels and might be used as inputs into valuation or economic models like you get to know how the market is performing overall through the satellite imaging if there are uh, like if the if the footfall in retail stores have increased or decreased so you can get that kind of knowledge using the machine learning algorithms Describe the applications of big data and data science to investment management. Well, let's see first is, let's see what's data science. Data science is a field that utilizes advancements in computer science, statistics and other fields for the purpose of extracting information from the data. Because of the unstructured data, alternative data often requires specialized treatment before they can be used for analysis. Let's see the data processing methods. First of all, first is capture. The data capture refers to how the data is collected and transformed into a format that can be used by the analytical process. Then comes curation. Curation refers to the process of ensuring data quality and accuracy through data cleaning exercise. So that is data curation. Then comes data storage. It refers to how the data will be recorded, archived or accessed and the underlying database design. Then comes search. It refers to how to query the data. Transfer. It refers to how the data will move from the underlying data source or storage location to the underlying analytical tool. Data visualization. Visualization refers to how the data will be formatted, displayed and summarized in graphical form. There are a number of techniques like network graphs, word clouds, tree diagrams, heat maps that are used to uh, that are used to display the non-traditional unstructured data. And for structured data, we can use tables, charts, frequency tables, and all that. Text analytics. It involves the use of computer programs to analyze and drive meaning, typically from large unstructured text or voice-based data sets, such as company filings, analyst commentary. Uh, earning calls and all that. Natural language processing. NLP is a field of research that is at the intersection of computer science, AI and linguistics. It focuses on developing computer programs to analyze and interpret the human language. For example, Siri for Apple. It's also a, is a good example of natural language processing algorithm. It can be used to monitor analyst commentary to aid investment decision making. So these are the applications of fintech or the data science or we can say the big data for the investment management profession.
If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so that you can get notified on my future videos. Thank you very much.